Hey guys, it's Mike, and in this video, I wanted to share with you seven formulas that are on an industry standard Excel exam, not just to help you if you have an exam coming up, but if you're a Excel user and you consider yourself, you know, a little bit of a beginner or intermediate user with Excel. So if you ever go to get a job and you want to show your Excel skills, you should know these seven formulas. And I've also got a bonus at the end with updated Excel formulas as well. And if you wanna jump over to the next video, I'm gonna post right after this one. It's all about time functions and formulas in Excel. And there's a little bit of a Loki theme there. So if you enjoy the Loki show like I do, we're gonna use that to uh, explain some tricky time functions in Excel. So let's jump right into it. The first ones we're gonna start off with is the max and the average functions. And let's say we're a teacher and we're calculating our final exam. We wanna analyze the final exam marks. With our class, we wanna see what is the highest score that my students were able to achieve on the exam. Hopefully it's not 100 because we don't want it to be too easy to get perfect, but maybe if a few students got perfect, that would be okay. So we'll see what the highest score, we'll see if anyone did get perfect on this exam. And we're going to go to the maximum area here in the final exam cell, which is cell E11, and we'll start typing equal max. So if you're looking for the greatest value in a range, the highest value, it's the max function that we use. So it's equal max, open parentheses, and then we'll just highlight the range here. Now you can't use that control shift down shortcut that I showed in my last video because there are blank cells. That's gonna help us calculate how many students miss the exam in a later function. So, so we just have to manually highlight that range and then close the parentheses, press enter, and our highest score was 99, so no one got perfect. We made a tricky exam, but the uh, highest score is 99. Now, let's say we want the average scores of the final exam. We'll do the same thing, we'll do equal average. And if you're wondering, is average if on the industry standard exam, it's no longer, it used to be in the 2016 exam, it'll no longer be on the 2019 exam. So if you're asked to gather the average and you're confused whether do I just do a simple average or average if, it'll just be simply the average. So if you're asked to get the average of a range, like in this example, it's just the average. You don't have to worry about average if. But if you wanna learn more about the average if function, you can check out uh, my last week video. I'll put a link in the description box below. But we'll just do the average for these final exam grades. Again, I'll just kind of manually highlight this range because I can't use my shortcut trick. That's the downside of leaving cells blank instead of putting a zero. So average, open parentheses, I've got the final exam range. It's a name range, so I've given that a name range, which I'm gonna show you how to do um, later on in this video. But we can see the average is almost 81%, so we've got a strong class here. And uh, now we'll go on to uh, use the count blank function. The count blank function is gonna help us calculate how many students missed that final exam? How dare they? So um, we'll type in equal count blank, open parentheses, and again, it's just the same thing, except we type in equal count blank and then get this range here. We'll close the parentheses, and that's gonna help us determine how many students missed the final exam, and there's three of them. Now, I've gone over the if function in great detail in another video, and I'll put a video link in the description box to load for that one, but if you wanna see how you would do the if formula in this video, it's just, let's say the passing rate on the exam is 70%. So the if formula would evaluate the first score in E17 and check if it's greater or equal to 70. That's the first part, the logical test. So you have to fill that out, the logical test. E17 is greater or equal to 70. And then the outcome that matches that condition is pass. So we put a comma, we put pass in quotation marks, and then the condition that doesn't meet that condition that we set up or the logical test is a fail. So the if formula is a conditional formula that matches two or tests two binary opposing outcomes um, based on the logical test that you set up. So I know that's tricky. That's why I did a whole video on it. So go check that out if that was uh, confusing and you haven't seen that video yet. But we'll move on to our two text formulas in this but we'll move on to our last three text formulas in this video. So we've got our text formulas, including the concat function. Uh, we don't call it concatenate anymore, it's concat. So that's what's good about these industry standards exams. They help you kind of update your skills. Um, we don't use can concatenate anymore, just concat, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's start off with the upper and left function. So we'll do the left first. Uh, let's say we want to get the first three letters or the numbers from the student ID. Let's say they're unique. We don't really need these other numbers. We just need the first three letters. So if you wanted the first three letters of a text string, this is how you do that using the left function. So you type in equal left, 
open parentheses. You'd get the text value first, so wherever the first text value is here, A17, and then I'll put a comma, and then I need they need to know, uh, okay, how many number of characters from the left would you like? So we want the first three numbers, so we just type in a three. If you wanted the first two, you type in two and, and so on. So uh, now we can close the parentheses here, press enter, and then we'll copy this code all the way down to get kind of, kind of a short version of uh, the student numbers here. Um, because the first three numbers are unique. So there's a little bit of a trick or a curveball that the industry standard exam will throw at people. And it's probably good for you to know just as an Excel user how to embed different functions within each other. So let's say we want to change the pass fail values to uh, uppercase letters, but we don't want to have to alter the if formula that we put in. You could actually do that with the upper function if you just put it before the original formula. So you don't have to mess with the original formula. You just kind of put it around the if formula that already exists. So this is how you would use one function and embed it into another to change the outcome. So we wanted to do this really quickly using the upper function. You could just type in before the if in the formula bar, just type in upper, open parentheses, and then put a closing parentheses at the end. So it just kind of wraps the upper function around the if formula that's currently there press enter and then you can see that we've changed the how the value looks uh, using the upper formula so the upper formula will capitalize a text value and and then we can copy this down you can see that the values are all capitalized now so that's kind of a cool trick we can use with the upper function okay now the concat function so again the industry standard exam has us use the concat function don't use the concatenate um, it's a little bit different and it's outdated so just it's the concat function that we're using unless you're doing the 2016 exam then use the concatenate function away but the 2019 version of that exam um, they've moved from concatenate to concat and newer versions of Excel will actually tell you don't use concatenate anymore. So use concat. Uh, let's say we want to gather a, the student's email based on the code that we've created and at school.ca. So um, to do that, you would, so we're going to take an already existing text string and then join it to one that doesn't already exist, but one that we create. So the way you do that is type in equal concat open parentheses again see how it told me not to use the concatenate uh, function so it's concat and then the first text is this code here and I'll put a comma and then I'm gonna just jump into this insert function dialog box so I can better show you what the concat function can do um, it can join multiple text strings we're only going to use two in this example so we can also type in qu quotation marks because I'm typing stuff in and then at school I know so original uh, dot .ca and then put uh, quotations around it. So press OK. So we have this first student 391 at school.ca because we've joined a text string that exists for, and another text string that we created. And that's how you could create a uh, generic email right away. As a bonus, it's really important for you to know how to multiply things by a named range. So that's what we're going to do in this task here. We're going to multiply the quarter three values by the name range that represents this cell here. And we're going to start off by typing equal in this cell. And then we'll use this as a cell reference. We'll multiply by the name range Q3 increase. And it pops up here. So I'll just double click on that. We'll press enter. And then I can copy this formula down. And it's great because we don't have to use absolute cell references. The value here knows that, OK, we're going to keep coming back to this name range in this formula and that's why you would use name ranges and formulas it just helps you save time from having to do absolute cell references and this is something that's new to the 2019 exams that they've added in so it's probably important for you to know but if you're ready for more advanced functions that have to deal with time and you like the loki series join us in the next video in the box below and i'll see you in that one thanks for watching bye